Technology is constantly evolving, and with the recent advances in display design, virtual reality is once again gaining popularity. Real-time rendering for VR pushes modern GPUs to the limit. The binocular setup requires rendering the scene from two perspectives, and because of the large field of view, display resolutions are increasing to give an acceptable angular pixel density. On top of this, frames should be rendered at least 90 times per second to give a smooth feeling of immersion. We propose a technique called Temporal Resolution Multiplexing, or TRM for short. TRM reduces the rendering cost and subsequent data transfer without significant loss in visual quality. TRM renders every other frame at a lower resolution in order to exploit limitations in the visual system. Because the visual system has a finite integration time, consecutive frames are fused, producing a sharp image. This works because the visual system is insensitive to both high spatial and temporal frequencies. TRM is conceptually simple and easy to integrate into current rendering pipelines, but some care is needed to achieve a convincing result. For analysis, let's consider a simple case of a line moving from left to right. On a 60 Hz display, pixels stay constant for a 60th of a second, freezing the animation for that time. However, as the eyes smoothly follow the line, the pixels that don't move on the screen during the frame actually do move on the retina. When the visual system integrates the retinal image, we see a blurry animation. This effect is known as a hole type blur. Let's consider the same example in the Fourier domain. The x-axis represents spatial frequency and the y-axis represents temporal frequencies. The diamond shape on this plot indicates the range of frequencies visible to the eye. The animation at 60 Hz forms a short line. It lacks high spatial frequencies. It's blurry. The Fourier domain also reveals multiple aliases, which cause the motion to look juddery. At 120 Hz, the lines become wider as the animation gets sharper, and the aliases are put further apart, making them less visible. Black frame insertion can improve sharpness of moving objects, but it doesn't reduce aliases. NCSFI offers similar quality to black frame insertion, but it doesn't reduce brightness. TRM reduces hole type blur more than NCSFI or motion sharpening but it also reduces the visibility of aliases, producing smoother motion than other methods. Compared to all the other methods, TRM produces the animation that appears the closest to 120 Hz, while reducing the rendering and transmission cost almost by half. Previous methods tried inserting smooth frames between sharp frames. When the content motion is fast, the video appears sharp due to the motion sharpening effect, but when there's little or no movement, the video appears blurry, the sharp frames can be enhanced to compensate for blurriness, but this is sometimes impossible thanks to the limited dynamic range of a display. This can be avoided with a residual buffer, which postpones missing enhancement until the next frame. For moving content though, this can introduce ghosting artifacts. TRM combines several ideas to radically reduce the rendering resolution and address shortcomings of previous methods. Firstly, we take advantage of smooth pursuit eye motion to generate a physically correct signal for both static and moving objects. Previous methods, such as NCSFI, had to halve the frame rate to correctly compensate for motion. Secondly, we noted that moving objects do not need to contain high frequency details to appear sharp, due to the motion sharpening effect. For that reason, we could selectively block a residual buffer, which let us avoid ghosting artifacts found in previous methods. Finally, we model the visibility of motion artifacts for different frame rates, screen resolutions, contrast levels, motion speeds, and resolution reduction factors to demonstrate how TRM would perform for different display configurations. We tested the method experimentally. First, we asked people to assess the quality of video rendered with our method compared with full resolution rendering. We found that performance is content specific, but a 0.5 factor reduction in the resolution still maintains high motion quality. We also implemented our algorithm for VR to compare with NCSFI and the state-of-the-art reprojection algorithm, ASW. We used a sports hall scene, a bedroom scene, and a race car scene. TRM results were almost indistinguishable from full frame rate and consistently better than NCSFI or ASW. We propose a technique that can reduce the number of rendered and transmitted pixels by 37 to 49% while maintaining quality close to the original. We explained why our technique is more efficient and produces better quality than alternatives, such as black frame insertion, purely motion sharpening based approaches, NCSFI, and reprojection. The method is easy to integrate into existing VR pipelines, but it does require presentation at least 90 frames per second.